we've been asked to do a more in-depth review on the van. Most, I think, there's quite a few people who are buying the van and want to see it in a bit more depth. There's not that many sort of walkabouts on the van. So we're going to do something a little bit more detailed and show you a little bit more about the van. So we'll start on this back corner. All right, we've got your garage door. You have these little clips on the side that will hold the door up. They are quite flimsy. Be gentle with them. Now the garage is completely sealed off from the rest of the motorhome. You can't access it from inside the motorhome. And if you come up here and look down there, it literally goes right the way through and it can be accessed from both sides, which is quite nice because you can have bulky things outside and you're not trying to, you haven't got to pull stuff out to get to stuff behind it. Just go to the other side of the van. It's simple. Moving along, we've got your electric hookup cable be here. The only thing I'm going to mention on this one is if you've got a cable in it and you're, you're taking it out is you've got to push this down otherwise you're going to break something in there. So it's just a little button there, just push it down and that will release your electric hookup cable. We have two fridge freezer vents per year so that's to allow sort of the excess heat and gases to escape. Obviously you've got the door per year. You've got a little door clip here that Obviously it's like a door catch, a little bit flimsy, again, you know, you look after it, it's going to serve its purpose, but they do get replaced quite often. You've then got your gas compartment. So if you have a look in below, we've got space for two bottles, you've got your regulator, and I'm pretty sure you can fit up to two 13 kilogram bottles in here, so it's, it's quite spacious. We'll have to go around and have a look on the other side. Right, right beer. This is your boiler exhaust. Now, it's important that when you are using the boiler, so the boiler is used for hot water and your heating, this window's kept closed because you don't want the exhaust fumes from this tracing back into your motor home. We've then got an external locker. So we put our hose, our ram skid panels in here because they can get quite damp. And because this is completely separate from the motor home, it's a little sealed external point that any damp in there stays in there. And then if we notice there is damp, like today it's hot, we leave the door open for an hour, just dries it out. Down be here. Little handle here, you pull this out to open up your wastewater and you push it in to close it. <laughs> it's as easy as that. Coming further along, you've got your water inlet, so it's very important you don't mix this up. Or I've heard of stories of people trying to put diesel or have put diesel in these. It's a water inlet. Your diesel is under a cap by the front door. You've then got your toilet cassette. So it's just your standard 30 foot cassette. You just lift this blue button here and that will just pull out. <laughs> then over here, you got the other side of your locker. I've got a really nifty bike rack, which I don't use it for bikes. I tend to use it to um, do my washing. <laughs> It's a good dryer, isn't it, love? It's a good dryer, so I'm just going to show them how easy it is. Okay, I'll pull it down like this. And for now, I am actually using it as a washing line. Um, <laughs> I'm sure most of you will use it for its actual intended purpose. But it's that simple there. Okay, if you look up there, you see we've got a camera, which gives us a nice view when we're reversing. It's proven to be quite handy, isn't it, love? <laughs> Yes. A few sticky points. You get one that points straight down, and then you get one that gives you a wider angle out the back. Very useful. Yeah. So that's the outside of the van covered. Um, I think we're just going to have a little bit of a show off on the inside now. All right. We'll start at the back, and we'll work our way to the front. So on the roller team seven four six, you've got a U shape lounge this is one of the big reasons why we actually chose this one yes there's a dinette at the front which is great for the kids i think if you've got a family it's brilliant because 
if we want our space and the kids have got their own space it's just the perfect setup this then turns into a massive i'd have to say king size bed because it's definitely larger than a double and it's so simple to do you literally pull that forward there's two cushions at the top bed that you just put down on here job done it couldn't be any simpler now i'm going to talk to you a little bit about the window system a minute because i don't mind the window system but i have seen better systems in other models so if you come up here I'll start with the actual window itself. Now, the locking system on these are fine. You've got these locking points on them. You just push the button that's in the center there and lift it. It's like a compression style window. So you push it out and it'll hold. I can push out a bit more. It'll hold. What you will find or what we found is in the stronger winds that these windows might just start falling. Now, I personally prefer the locking systems or the ones that sit in sort of set places. They're all right, but like I say, not a massive fan of them. You then got your blackout blind. Now, I actually prefer these over the pleated blinds. I just think they're, they're a lot stronger and a lot more durable. I guess that's personal preference. The, ple then, the pleats are a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, I think. I so. think they, they, yeah, you're right. They look nicer, but they're just got paper. The young kids, like mm. we've got, we've we have had them damaged in the past mm. by the kids, and then the fly blind, you just bring down and it just clips into the main blind, and then you use the centre pinch point here where you can move it up and down. On the seven four six as well, rather than curtains, they've given. Do they call these Venetian blinds this style? No, just fancy blinds just blinds roller blinds or something so you just got a, a pull string over here and you just pull on that and it'll come down i'm gonna lock that back up there yeah we'll tie them up because of the children and they you know obviously uh i I'm just a bit funny about the risk of yeah them. they're not very good i mean they're, they're quite thin um, they're very pretty they're very pretty more decorative if you want to keep you know that privacy Mm. use your blackout blinds we literally just use the blackout for everything don't we yeah. we try not to mess with the other blinds at all yeah. yeah so another good thing up here is there's a lot of storage space we've got one two three four five six so we've got six overhead lockers and then you've got these two corner storages you've also got if you look just down below you got storage here and storage here. I think we got our bedding in the one side and some odds and sods in the other side. You've then got up top, as Charles pointed out to me to remind me, your skylight. Again, there's lots of different systems. I don't mind this particular system. So you, you can have it locked in a full open position as it is at the moment. You can have it on a just a jar system. Now you've got these little tabs here that you pull up on both sides and it'll fall in and then you can push them down to lock that in now that's good if it's windy that's gonna stop that just flying all over the place and flapping about and then obviously you've got the closed system again on the skylight you have got the blind now this is the blind we were talking about earlier that we prefer not to have on the side windows and you've also got your fly screen one little feature i just think it's a nice touch on this was this all-round leather surround on the skylight and then there are led lightings up there as well so in the night it does give a nice ambient light just think it's a nice general feature isn't it love it's lovely but um you've obviously got to make sure for safety reasons when you're driving that's absolutely shut otherwise you're going to lose a oh, window yes. oh yes the other thing we noticed as well is to fully shut it with the paper blind so if you put the paper blind across just to show them that needs to be closed when you're traveling because otherwise it's going to rattle yeah, quite quite badly yeah close there's two on you both look exactly the same we just found closing these when traveling definitely less rattle. Yeah. so if you want to come around here and i'll show you what's going on in this corner i'll just have a little look around you forgot to show them the cupboard i empties bearing in mind we are currently away in this so i just want to show you quickly just drop that there and lift up that's the amount of space that you get in these cupboards it's pretty big um, and we've got so many of these. Some have got shelves inside as well, which are really, really handy. So I'm showing you that purely because I've taken the time and effort to empty it. 
<laughs> for everybody to see inside. So there we are. There we are. <laughs> so in this corner, you've got your TV point for here, for your Second. aerial and your 12 volt power supply. And then you've got two light switches which control the lights in this general area. You've then got the Truma controls. Now this controls, I'm not going to go into it in too much detail because there's a lot of videos on this system, but this is where you control your van heating and your hot water. At the moment it's absolutely boiling so it's all turned off. There is another light switch over here. I didn't know about this one, but this is actually really, I like this one because what this one does, when I turn it on, if you look down here, and these are spread all around the van, there are these little blue LEDs, like a night light, um, and it just lights up the van just enough in the evening. If you know if the kids need to go to the toilet, it's giving just enough light that they can see what they're doing. Okay, so in the kitchen, there are only two power sockets in the 746, and they're both singles, and one of them is up here. Now, at the moment, we've got our Wi-Fi plugged into it. You have these little pegs. Now, if you twist these pegs and unlock them, it allows you to position them where you want. And then just turn them back the other way to lock it again. You've got, again, two overhead storage compartments here. You've got your sink here. And your three burner gas hob. Over here in this cupboard, I'll show you this one because this I know is where your gas isolation valves are. So you see you've got your gas isolation for the boiler, oven, fridge. I'm going to assume that's, no, because that's hot water and heating. I'm not 100% sure what that is. The hob, that'll be for the hob. And then over here, that's your RCD for when you're on electric cook-up. Plus all my cleaning stuff. And all your cleaning stuff. Also down here, you've got the oven grill. So you, there is a grill option. You get this cute little pan. And there is a handle that we keep in the cutlery tray, which I'll show you in a second. And then obviously it's an oven. And then you've got your three-way fridge. So this confuses a lot of people because you've got a sign of a battery and a lot of people think that they can just run this off either the leisure battery or the vehicle battery i'm afraid that's not the case that battery symbol there is for when you're you're driving so this is connected to your main vehicle battery and will only be activated when the engine is on so if you turn that engine off that is just not an option for you it's completely redundant you can only use this when you're actually driving you then got your gas supply, and then you got your electric cook-up supply, which as you've seen earlier, we're on electric cook-up, so that's just using the site's electric and we'll save our gas. I'll bring you back up here, because as I said earlier, you do have these two drawers. So you see we've got our cookway and tea towels in here. And our cutlery tray in here now that all came with the van so it was quite a nice little addition we were able just to put that in there and then you've got a wardrobe but here i know at the back is where our booster for our tv aerial which is on the roof um that doesn't come as standard with this van so we had the dealer put that on i can't show you i know there's loads of sorry i've put there. loads of hoodies <laughs> our campfire hoodies in there sorry yeah it's fine in here is the bathroom so down here you've got your that foot toilet at the back over here where you can see that blue button that's for the flush it's also like a green uh level indicator yeah so while that's green it's okay to use and does it go red when yes. it's full yeah red when it's full and you need to empty and it. then stew's got his work cut out there <laughs> and then <laughs> I'll move in. So the sink section on the 746, the tap does that. That's because it supplies both the basin and it also comes up here for the shower. 
You press the top of it then to make it into a shower. Yeah, I'll show you now. So if I turn the water on, it's flowing standard, but if I push this button here, it turns it into the shower. You may have noticed there is a wooden plate on the floor here that needs to be removed if you are to use the shower so that the shower screen here can be closed and that just comes around to a magnetic catch just for you. Now down below there is some storage. Uh, we tend to put the kids shoes in there. Well there's no shoes in there at the minute. There's not at the moment someone's cleaned it <laughs> but quite a bit bigger than it looks um so we you can i think some people have put like their pets food in there and cleaning stuff so there's quite a bit of stuff it's going quite on handy there. isn't it yeah yeah okay so this is the dinette area so as you can see on this model there are three seat belts because it's the three and a half ton i believe you can get it i think it's the 3.85 ton where you do have the four seat belts and this does turn into a double bed you take this table off and it drops down to another bar down by there now there is at the back here and we'll show you in a second there is the second single socket that's in this fan and there's also a usb point down there and there's two usb do you want to show them how to take there? the table off we can do yeah it might be worthwhile so this one is they all pretty much work like this you just lift it up and it, it literally comes off and then you can see the second bar down there that it would go on to. But before you put this on there, you just need to push that button there. And that will click into a 90 degree. And this then acts as a stand here once you've clicked it onto there. And then if you come over, I'll just show you. So you've got the single socket there. And your double USB point just by there. Now, underneath this seat is your water point. Now, to be fair, you would only come to this if you're, say, about to leave site and you've got too much water on and you need to get rid of some of it. So you just open up the red bun here and that will show you just inside our water tank. Now inside there, there are two handles. The higher handle, if you pull that plug out, that will take you down to 25% water level. If you pull the bottom one out, that will completely empty your tank for you. And this simply just slides back into that one. On this side, we just lift this up. That's for your heating and your hot water. Now, there is a little valve down here with a blue plug. And that's when you need to do a winter drain down. You'll just open that plug up just by there. Can you see that? Yep. And then, as you can see from all the ducting, the 746 has blown air heating. We've had them in a few, quite a few previous fans and it's a very effective way of heating up the fan and we've never had any trouble with it. If I can bring you inside here, love, and we'll look at this section. So, this is your pop-up TV. Absolutely great for when you're traveling and you need to keep the kids quiet because you're driving down some dodgy lanes with articulated lorries coming the other way. So this keeps them entertained. Now, we were told you could only get to a 19 inch in here. Uh, we did a bit of research and you can actually get a 24 inch in here, which is what we've done. And that is simply, as you can see, it's just on a pulley system. When that's up and you're driving, it doesn't move, to be fair. The springs on it are very strong. You got two full-size drawers here filled with all our bits at the moment and then down the bottom 
you have another little compartment but you've got i've shown you this one because this is where the 12 volt fuse box is just hiding in by there amongst my hoover sorry yeah woman got to have a hoover i gotta have my cleaning bits on board sorry right your controls for everything get up here so you just press this button here you don't press the lighted section you push the button to the side that will turn it on as you can see at the moment this is already turned on this light here is just to show us that it is currently connected to electric you got your water pump but here which i've just turned off turn that back on you got your awning light but there now this is a main light switch for the 12 volt lighting in the van. If I turn that off, that's just knocked all the lights off within the van. If I turn that on, that's put all the lights back on, which are obviously all have secondary then switches, so you can choose which ones you want. This button here is for the temperature in the van. As you can see, it's a very hot day today, and it is quite warm in here. The top right one shows us our water levels and our waste water levels. So S1 shows what our water level is. Now this goes up 33, 66 and 100%. So even though that says 33%, it doesn't mean I've got 33%. It means I've got between 33 and 66%. Um, so it's somewhere in the middle. If I push that same button again, it'll tell me what my waste water is at. And again, that's again 33 to 66% full as well. The second button here shows us the leisure battery and the third one here shows the vehicle battery. And then again, you got your on off switch just by there. You've now got the over cab bed and this is for us this is where the kids sleep because they always argue guess top bunk now they all get it so up here if i just give you a quick look you got a little window to the side just there and you've got a bigger one to the front there Th those cushions that you can see there are used to make the bed at the dinette here and the king size bed at the back there is underneath here this net system uh, which hooks on to these little clips there's three of them dotted across the ceiling and that just goes up once the kids are in bed and secures it and then the ladder that you saw up there just clips into the two points here and come down to the floor now when you're traveling That will just go up on a piston, pop that in for security, make sure it doesn't come crashing down. Now, to be fair, that's, once that's up like that, it's never come down. It's, it's been absolutely solid, hasn't it, love? Yeah, it's been good. Now, the second skylight we were talking about earlier is just beer. As you can see, again, a very sunny day. Now, something I didn't show you, which I'm going to show you before we go into the cab, is every single overhead locker on the van has led strip lights underneath them and they're all controlled by a touch point there's no switch there it's just a touch point and that is on every single overhead cab so the lighting in here it could literally be like blackpool couldn't it yeah there's an absolute crazy amount of lighting it's underneath all the worktops we take advantage when we're on electric hookup we like to show it off then <laughs> well i do light it up so we could see because usually when we go off grid we tend to say, oh, we'll save the lights. Just use the one light. <laughs> yeah, we'll save the lights. But say on the 746, you have got a solar panel um, that does obviously keep that leisure battery topped up. Now, we found when the weather's like this, we can have the TV on for a couple of hours. We can use the light, the water pumps, all these various things that are used in the 12 volt system. And we've never gone below, you know, we've just not lost anything more than sort of about 8% of the battery's power. Uh, it's been more than adequate but there are things if you are going off grid that you can do to sort of protect you in that manner and you want to check our essentials video out for that so i'm gonna go open the front window and we're gonna take a look at the cab okay so this is the cab for 
the Autorola 746. This is a Fiat cab. This one came with the driver's pack, so I know we get, I don't know exactly what that include, included, but I have got speed, cruise control, speed limiter just here. You have this little part here that does come up. Can you see that in the camera? Yeah. And this is to allow you to put your tablet, sat nav, or mobile phone. That just locks back down into place. You've got a media center just here. Now on the media center, you can connect your phones. You have that Bluetooth function. You've got DAB radio, normal radio. And what is the best thing on that is the sat nav. It has been, we were told, it was designed around the motorhome so that the dimensions that are in it with the weight so it does try and put you on routes that are more suitable for the size and weight of the vehicle you've then got your standard sort of air con wind blows normal functions go on to my bit now is it yeah should we have a look at your side love so this is my side because i don't generally drive well, I do, but I don't drive this because it's too big. Um, but one of my favourite features is in here. So when you're driving along and you've got the aircon on, you can have your water, chocolate bars and everything in there. And that acts as a cool box. So quite often, Stu will say, pass me the water. And it, it does go ice, ice cold. Um, you've got a little cuddy under here for all your bits and bobs. Um, and just the same with any. You've got your glove box. I've got loads of space in these door sills, so that at the minute skews me the mess. That's like got my map. Not that I can really read a map that well, but we've got a map. We've got all our books, so when we're driving along, I'll look at some places and some sites and we'll plan quite often. And then down here, we have cup holders. What I like to specifically say, there's your coffee, there's your decaf. And that's me. I'm on my captain's chair. It does spin around, doesn't it? Yes. I still haven't <laughs> figured it out. So that one? Yes, it's so I, that lever just Can I pull it out? So this one, yeah, it goes sort of out and backwards a bit. Oh, hang on. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> First time I've done that. But there, that spins all the way around. But to be fair, to move nice. that, you've actually got to slide it forward. Yeah. Um, so the backrest here doesn't interfere with that section there so you sort of slide it forward oh, and then it definitely. will do a 180 spin so guys that's your auto roller roller team 746 tour um packed with features say as far as using it with a family for us it's absolutely great and we absolutely love it don't we we've barely been home have we <laughs> no i think since we've had it which was nearly a month ago i think we've been home for three nights yeah but get out there enjoy it get exploring Yes. But until next time, see you in a bit. <laughs> That's all right, guys. <laughs>